Um, some of you have seen something we did a few years ago on the cultural part. And um, I, I, I liked it. I, I asked, oh, Larry, Larry, you know this gentleman. What was his name? You referred him to us in, um, he had been in Hong Kong, but he, he took it and re, re-imaged the whole cultural process triangles, which was fascinating. Um, just from another perspective, I haven't. You're talking about the guy at the university? Yes. Um, Polytech, the uni poly sci or something? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. He, he loved, he loved the work. He loved everything about the IC. <laughs> it was fun, but he, yeah. We'll just leave these are off to the right. Are these the uh, redone ones? No. Um, okay. Just wondered. Okay. Well, I think um, Jim. So it's cultural commonality and social art. No. Oh, that's that's, that's just right blowing now. that triangle up. Uh, okay. Okay. That's just focusing on that triangle. No, that's that was all there, and it's going. That's going down about the fifth or sixth level. Okay. Most of us, yeah, don't go down that far, but it's, I started to go down that far using the metaphor of an, a social artist. And so mm -hmm. I was fascinated with what we had talked about with social art. And mm -hmm. um, I, I, I discovered just incredible uh, cross linkages there that I was very excited about so, a couple mm -hmm. years ago. So that's why. I've been on this um, digging more deeply into the cultural processes and mm -hmm. understanding. If one left the Gene Houston uh, tribe, so to speak, just before social artistry became the thing, <laughs> where where would one go to catch up a little? Um, we could have Ooh. a conversation. <laughs> okay, I will talk to you later. I'll okay, okay, let's do that. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So, Jim, I'm wondering if you can send the link to David Dunn. I think he, it might be more of a case of just, it, and I'll see, he, I might not also see everyone that's here. Let's see. Okay. Michelle, welcome. Evelyn. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, Mark, greetings. Thank you all. Um, I think we can get get ready to lunch. And um, Jim, you're going to talk about kind of how we got here, that journey. And then I'm going to invite us all to play in the sandbox <laughs> together today. <laughs> and you remember you playing your bucket in and your shovel? Yes, I did. You you remember that dynamic of just gleeful, anything goes, um, oh, yeah. kind of, um, you just don't throw sand in each other's face. No, that's <laughs> but we, yes. we're going to see what this might look like. It, it really mm. is an experiment and um, wanting to, to further conversations. So, Jim, I'm going to, yep. The future is blowing wildly in our faces, sometimes brightening the air, and sometimes blinding us. <clears throat> that sense has, uh, that quote, which dates back to the 1970s, uh, seems to become more and more true uh, every day. Mm. Uh, back uh, in uh, perhaps November of, uh, back in uh, November, of 2020. Yeah, some year. I forget what year. Anyway, <laughs> but, uh, Jan and Lauren and I have been conducting a series of pilot sessions raising the question, what will it take uh, <clears throat> to release the human energy we need to uh, deal with the economic, political, and cultural changes confronting us over the rest of this century? We held five, six pilot sessions. And on November 15th, we uh, had a session, I think several of you participated, in which we began to pull together that information. Uh, along with the 140 comments that were sent in uh, 
via a, a, a survey monkey survey link. As we worked, uh, <clears throat> it got deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper because it seemed as though uh, the many of the of the basic brainstorm items seemed like really good answers. Mm -hmm. As good answers as when they were pulled together into eight, one of the eight ones did. So how to hold that complexity? We spent mm -hmm. a long time. And then uh, finally, uh, we we used a modified set of the information that came up on November 15th. And then we took all of the other information and put it under that in one massive spreadsheet. And I personally was paralyzed for about two weeks with that amount of information. And, and I thought to abandon the project, but neither Lauren nor Jan would allow that to happen. Uh, thank God for the rise of the feminine in this century. And, uh, and, and so we went back through all of the data and just decided to pretend there were going to be four sub points under each one of the eight. And so now we have 32 answers. And uh, we presented these to a group of people. And Jan led a little bit of a reflective conversation. And they got actually pretty excited that these were good answers, which was heartening to us. And so we scheduled this session to probe a little bit further into what we've come up with. Uh, by seeing how these might connect uh, to uh, an, the, the larger uh, social process of which we were part is represented by the social process triangles. And I'm turning it back to Jan unless she wants me to say anything else. And this is, mm -hmm. we, thought, we thought the three of us would just get together on a Saturday morning and work on this. And then we thought, why not ask some friends? <laughs> and so we asked some, friends, but this is really a, it's not a organized presentation. It's a putz around to see what we come up with. And God, yeah. it's good to see your face. When I do my best work. <laughs> yes. I, love, I think that's true. I love yeah. to see all these faces. I just get. Yeah, no, it is. It is very heart heartening. Yes, to do that. Well, um, on, let's see, uh, Lauren is going to, um, does everyone know Lauren? Have they bumped into her? Okay. Met most, most of you, a couple of faces that I don't recognize. Okay, well yeah. just, Lauren, say, say a sentence about yourself then. Yeah. <laughs> <couple>. Okay. <laughs> I'm Lauren. Uh, I live in Denver, Colorado, and I am very new still to um, uh, top methods and ICA. I stumbled upon meeting James and Jan through this project, and uh, this is still still like within the first year of my exposure to these tools and these methods and philosophies, if you will. So I am learning a ton and. I've just been sucked right up into the vortex of all of the great things that you all do. So happy to be here and to continue to meet people and learn from all of you. So thanks. Very good. Yeah, Lauren's been a, a great a, a addition to the team and a new perspective, fresh perspective. So that's good. Thank you. So on the, let's see. So, Jan, did you want me to screen share? Yes, that's it. Thank you. Working on that now. Okay. So this is the the final where all the answers have landed is right here. Um, and yeah. And the reason it looks like we can't do our math is they were in a different order. And so when we started to group them together. Uh, you can see the pink, we got the pinks, the greens, and the blues. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to have you kind of take a look at that. Um, the, um, we said the perspective, 
we, we wanted a holding title. So that's where we came up with perspective, focus, and leadership. And we talked about that was the engagement uh, or enactment of a global planetary perspective, worldview, story, cultural dynamics. So all of that was kind of part of that. We didn't finalize it into one. And we also thought that those were perhaps more linked to uh, contextual re-education in terms of, of working. And we'll come back to those. But um, so the adopt a planetary- sorry, sorry to interrupt. My Miro screen is telling me Miro is going to be unavailable starting at 1130 because of m maintenance. Oh, okay. Uh, oh no, wait a second. Wrong day. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, it says March 25th, which is not today. So oh, it's okay. That's right. They're giving uh, a week's <laughs> notice. Ten, thank you. Larry, Nine thank more you. days. Keep it, thank you for keeping an eye on the future, Larry. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Okay. So there we've got perspective, focus, and leadership. And then in the middle, the greens. We have uh, solidarity, structures, and truth. Um, and this was more about action, uh, doing enough one-off actions to understand what the new system and structures could be. The experimentation that's going on right now is also part of that. Um, and uh, that perhaps that was kind of the structural reformulation to use some old poetry that we used to talk about. And the, the light blue there, the spiritual maturity, practices, rituals, uh, rituals of spiritual maturity or healing uh, might be more about the new religious mode. Perhaps, I don't know. It was some language that began to help in the, in the midst of the wind, in the midst of the gale. <laughs> Uh, you know, it kind of gave us some stability. I, I don't know if that's going to last or not. Okay. So then any questions just on that, how it unfolded to that point? Thoughts? Okay. Just to make sure, can everyone see the spreadsheet with the four or with the three colors that Jan is describing? Yeah. Okay, I'm just making sure because my Zoom is not highlighting it like it normally does. Okay, great. Okay. We said we would play for an hour and a half, which we've done that. Can we? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. So I do want to capture just a couple of reflections um, and acknowledge that, you know, we'll have our pick up our lives. Um, but from this exercise, um, what what are you taking away? The significance of it? It could be that answer also. Jan, for me, um, I'm just amazed. I'm just so curious about when all of the little boxes are up there and all the arrows are, what is it going to look like? Okay. Mm. Because right now, cultural and, and political have most of the points. Uh -huh. Okay. So would you come back to a time when we did more of it? I would. Okay. Anyone else? Observations about where we've... Well, I do agree with, with Jane. We're probably going to wind up with lots of stuff in every triangle once we've covered all of the columns, but um, it reminded me of some work I did a long time ago called you with another woman called you get what you measure. Okay. And it was a process where you put your goals like on the hand, like the around the clock face. Mm -hmm. And then you take yes. each one in comparison to the others. And you say, if this one moves, will it move that one? Hmm. And you do that with all of them. So you have a lot of arrows coming out to things and coming into things. And then mm -hmm. you look at the ones that have the most arrows coming out are where you want to focus because they're going to move everything else. Hmm. When you do those, the rest of it's going to happen. Okay. You do have to go then another step and check your assumptions about 
is that true? <laughs> um, but it allows people who are sort of hung up on some of the goals to just let go because they're going to happen hmm. and to focus their efforts on the ones that are going to move the system. Okay. Uh -huh. I find I'd, I'd like to figure out how we do that here, but I, I don't see it yet. Okay. I find myself wondering about our basic question. What will it take to release large amounts of sustained human energy? And I'm wondering if we came at nurture, love, grounding, in for surrounding nature and ecology, how is that going to release human energy? Where is it going to release human energy? Mm -hmm. um, whether we come up with a little different perspective or not. It just dawned on me the human energy piece of the question. Mm-hmm. Because this whole thing started around, mm -hmm. not around, uh, it started around an assumption that the changes of this next century are fairly clear. But our efforts as a species and as social change organizations seem wanting. The capacity of human beings to respond productively and creatively and change how we're operating seems to be going way slow mm -hmm. compared to what's needed. Mm. Jim, I, I, I'm reminded as you talk of the comments about Putin and the leader of China, whose name I can't express, both believing that democracy can't succeed in this coming millennia or this coming century because the amount of effort that will be needed is going to have to be enforced rather than through a democratic process. So that's, it's, it's a really pertinent question. Well, it takes you right back to, to uh, Dwayne Elgin's, there's three ways it could go. <laughs> and the one that seems more likely at the moment is the authoritarian one, yeah. where things will happen because laws and stuff are put in place that make you do that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Where as all the people coming together and making a difference doesn't seem as likely at this point. And the only other choice is you just let go to heck and we become extinct in another century or so. Um, Mm -hmm. At the same time, we're seeing the human dimension in Ukraine where mm -hmm. citizens are coming together to fight the Russian invasion. Just ordinary, everyday citizens, men and women and teenagers and grandmothers and saying, this is not how we want to live. So there's this kind of contrasting mm -hmm. possibility. Mm. Hmm. I've often thought the climate work would not uh, coalesce into what needs to happen until it's in our face at a much higher level, where you sort of sense you have no choice, or at least people who aren't working in it already suddenly realize they have no choice but to get on the bandwagon, and get off their duff, get stuff done, or change their behavior. So. And that, that's, you know, Ukraine is people have gotten on their tongue and changed their behavior. They're not going about their ordinary life. They are standing up for um, their future. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes a lot of work is going on and, and, until push comes to sell. Like in uh, Ukraine, there was a lot of work to put them in a position so that they could, you know, resist as they have resisted. Yeah. I think on the environmental work, we're also seeing that there's a lot of work uh, that's shifting, and you know, you know it's, it's some of the stuff up top looks like, oh my God, this is never going to work. But there's a lot of uh, fundamental thoughts that are, are shifting underneath that. Mm -hmm. Not always it. As we're that. talking, I'm looking at those remaining two green boxes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Inveigle institutional establishment support and affirmation. 
and recreate approaches to social change, ethics, and care. Uh, we're kind of having a conversation about those, whether the... Uh, <clears throat> what is the first word on B3? <laughs> in bagel. <laughs> what? I think you need to look it up. It's Weagle. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I had to look that one up to did, make sure I, I did the meeting. Did I uh, did I typo that? That very much no, could have been no, a typo. A, no, I think it, <laughs> it's EI. No, I think it makes perfect sense. Weagle <laughs> institutional establishment support and affirmation. Mm -hmm. It's like <laughs> finagle, only different. Yeah. <laughs> To win over by coaxing flattery or artful talk. <laughs> to obtain by cajolery. To or to lead astray as his blind. To <laughs> way, do something evil by deceptive arcs or flattery. To entice, to, <laughs> or to seduce, to wheedle. Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, you know, I might want another word. <laughs> oh goodness. Um, well, how did this begin to inform you? Any shifts there or any, um, new insights? Maybe something niggling around the edges. I'm thinking a question just uh, coming to my mind, you know, that's we talk about the uh, releasing human energy. Mm -hmm. At least as I know, energy should be balanced. So where can we get energy from to release this energy? Mm. Mm -hmm. Incomplete. Michelle, what would be an example of that? Um, a balance of energy. Mm, that, that's from physics, I think. <laughs> you know, that's it's just like people. If we want to support others, it's a kind of energy consuming. So, yes. as individual, we need our uh, supporting system that make us feel energy like we can do something to support others mm. then how how can we as ICA can get all this kind of energy looking at this uh, you know uh, uh, narrow so all, all this kind of complete uh, completed relationships so that's like a lot of energy needed to mm. do the so where can we get our energy mm -hmm. I, I get a little overwhelmed, but each of those boxes, uh, we couldn't have those arrows say where the energy is coming from and where the energy is going. Uh, mm -hmm. In the sense mm -hmm. of where it, where it is now, what's what what's the energy that is either sustaining it or suppressing it or what anyway it gets you get into all kinds of complicated imagery but you could it would be a way to one of the nice things about Miro <laughs> is you can hit a button and make the arrow go a different direction anyway the uh, <laughs> to but in terms of what we would do with this uh, my image right now we got 32 boxes right now we have six. So I'm just imagining in my mind 32 boxes with air, with arrows going everywhere, and uh, I'm already overwhelmed. But at the same time, we could then look. What was the image? I think Sunny or somebody that you're looking for where the places are that has that that where there's a lot of energy either coming or going or whatever but and then the question would be how do we how do we tap into that anyway i'm complete hmm. in the yeah, in, uh, 
Yeah, <clears throat> the second question in this uh, inquiry, of course, was what are the implications uh, for us? And <clears throat> along those lines, uh, there's uh, in the top network annual gathering two weeks ago, uh, Jan and Lauren and I uh, sponsored two sessions, one of which was a uh, sort of using charting method to study a paper on, sh on shifts in how groups are being facilitated. Because a lot of the ways, because uh, under the belief that the ways groups are facilitated is determining whether or not they take on these larger issues. And uh, uh. the paper had some implications and stuff like that. And it was, the session was hard. Uh, <laughs> on, on the, the following night, <clears throat> uh, Jan and Lauren cobbled together a kind of an approach that kind of made, uh, assumed, uh, that tried to implement a couple of those suggestions. And the energy was palpable. It was amazing. Uh, uh, the participants in the small group were standing like, uh, pillars of uh, uh, indomitable spirit. And uh, by the end of the session, there was this, a real sweetness in the conversation. So I, I think uh, I appreciate Michelle's question. I also am experiencing myself at the end of this session, feeling better about the world and my position in it than I did before we started. I'm not saying this is the kind of energy, but I think I think this is a good question to attend to where as facilitators and where as ICA and where as top, uh, uh, do we build the energy in ourselves to really take this uh, to take this on? Which may involve us rethinking some of the the hard won assumptions that we've operated out of for a long period of time, like the social process triangle. And it may be, <clears throat> it may be much deeper than just uh, changing the language. Mm -hmm. Well, and it's also, if you think about it as three-dimensional instead of two, what would that difference would that make? Just add a little bit of what Nelson did with his modification on social process triangles, adding in an environmental. Yeah, and somebody drew it as a tetrahedron, which is a solid form. I think that's what, anyway, Im imagining and, and also mm -hmm. sensing uh, our, where there's a fund of energy to draw on. Mm hmm Good. Um, mm hmm Well, I, I came to this. Um, I'm fascinated right now with the little boxes and going in different places. Um, I came to this and talking about assumptions, Jim was pointing to me with the assumption that part of what it was going to take to release energy was in the cultural um, processes and dynamics. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and how did we help folks under, both understand their current culture and then understand ways that they might shape a new culture? And um, so, why do I say that? Let's mm -hmm. see. Um, anyway, I'm 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 fascinated, and I I think our our little team will keep keep going, and maybe announce another time to come together. Um, if if you're interested, you know. Um, Jim, Lauren, any kind of closing thoughts you want to make? Or anyone else closing thoughts? You don't. 
need to let time be a tyranny, but we, I mean, I, I guess we could just continue with the 32 very quickly. I had thought about um, everyone taking a column, you know, and just plotting it themselves to get a, a quick yeah. uh, picture. And so, um, and then that would give us one cut. Does anyone want to do that now? Or next Saturday? Yeah, I, my personal feeling is, is that the discussion of them has been really helpful. Mm -hmm. And as we get more familiar with this, some of you are very familiar with it, but some of us are not, mm -hmm. more familiar with the subcategories, <clears throat> it might be easier to go. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the discussion is fruitful and the discussion of people from around the world is really significant to me to be able to be with Mary and Larry and Evelyn and uh, Mark and others and all, all of you that are here mm -hmm. from all over the world. It's, it's, there's something very community building about that. And Michelle is, in China. Michelle, are you in the China or the US? In China. In China and Niels, I, I missed introduction, so. I'm in Canada. You're in Canada. So, you know, most of us, there's no one country that is overly represented here. And that's that's very, very exciting to be a part of this kind of discussion. Mm -hmm. mm. Actually, it the releases thing, energy. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> That's what I that's what I keep saying. We have these conversations about releasing energy and the conversations themselves are releasing human energy. So mm -hmm. um, before I forget, on that note, if everyone could just type uh, where they're from in the chat for me, I just want to try to do better at capturing that um, session to session. That'd be super helpful. Thank you. Okay. Uh, and also just to say, uh, Richard McGuire and some other people were wondering about a, a session at a more Australia friendly time zone. So we might want to, we may well be scheduling one uh, at, a, at a time that might be more friendly to uh, the time zones to which this time was especially unfriendly. <laughs> Also, for those of you who want to know about the social process triangles, I could refer you to the Global Research Network website, the Social Change Collection, our social process model, which contains wondrous amounts of information from back in the day. Mm -hmm. and, and we should probably dig out, uh, I know uh, we should probably dig out the, the attempts that have been made by several folks to pull to pull together more uh, contemporary uh, articulations. I think we're done. Okay. okay. Thank you for joining us, and we'll 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 see if there's a, another time the the floating virtual <laughs> dialogue on this, and and this is our uh, work at you know research right uh, right now that question, and then how do we move forward with both understanding what it'll take to release energy 